All right, you're up on my sun visor now. Much needed sun visor for where we're at. So uh, I'm leaving Reed Park. Uh, just got done shooting the video about Reed Park. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, but I did want to make an intro to this video that I'm about to post right now. Um, so, uh, so I'm about. So I've always been into video editing, and and I've never really shared it on YouTube. But I've always edited videos like I am sharing it with somebody. And a few years back, I did a hike to Webb Peak, which is on Mount Graham uh, in southeast Arizona. It, it's the most prominent mountain in Arizona. It gets up over 10,000 feet and uh, is something like 8,000 feet above, uh, above the desert, above the Sonoran Desert. And uh, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's in the Penalano mountain range. Um, so I had a uh, I had a Canon power shot, eight megapixel, for the longest time, and for the time it was an awesome camera. Now it's a freaking potato. So uh, just a heads up, this isn't going to be the most uh, uh, HD video. But I would like to share with you guys uh, my, that that backpacking trip. It was two nights, or I'm sorry, it was just one night in the uh, in the mountains. Did some hiking, camped out, woke up, did some more hiking. I love that. I love always being able to continue hiking. So here's that video. And like I said, I'm really sorry it was recorded with a potato. If it's not your style. Uh, you know, I won't be hurt if I don't get a lot of views. I don't get hurt if I don't get a lot of views, period. But, uh, yeah, if, if you don't mind the potato camera, um, please watch the video. It is amazing to see what we have here in the desert. Uh, just all you got to do is climb up, you know, not the way up. So, yeah, here's that video. Warning, high bear activity area. Persons allowing bears access to food will be sighted. Welcome to the Columbine. So every mushroom that we find on the trail, we're going to pick it up and at least try to ID it, you know, whether it's an edible or an inedible mushroom. If you see a mushroom like this out in the woods, generally when it has gills like this, you don't want to eat it. Or if you're looking for an edible mushroom, you want to look for the bullet mushrooms that have a porous underside, almost like a sponge. If you eat a poisonous mushroom and it happens to make you sick, the symptoms could be it could be vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, and you can even you can even die from a poisonous mushroom. So you got to be cautious. If you're in a, if you actually have to try a mushroom, the best way to do it is try little amounts of it. <laughs> We are above the desert where there's cactus, saguaro, you'll see that in other videos. But this is still here, right here in the middle of the desert. So 
we were walking down the trail and noticed these mushrooms here. There's been a lot of rain, so we've noticed a lot of mushrooms that we're not sure what they are. One like these, these are called puffballs. You can see these actually expel thousands and thousands of spores, if not more. And whenever you see a mushroom like this, when in doubt, do not eat these. Especially the bright colored orange tells you, hey, this may not be an edible mushroom, so if you're, you're second guessing it, don't eat these. Is that over here? That's a mulberry, mulberry tree. Come on up, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> this looks like it should be. So these are the mushrooms we I had mentioned earlier that now this right here, I don't know if you can see, see if you can get a little a little closer underneath here. Underneath here, these mushrooms have a spongy bottom, which most of your bull eat mushrooms do. So it still if you're not sure and you're in a survival situation where you absolutely need to eat, just try a little bit. Otherwise it could still make you sick. Even the edible mushrooms can make you give you a little indigestion. The main thing is when you're out here, the last thing you want to do is puke or get uh, or yeah, have diarrhea because you're going to lose all the water out of your body. So, but uh, this is one. If you're looking for an edible mushroom, one that you can eat, this is one I would try out first. So, bully mushroom. So here we are, Ash Creek Trail. This is Ash Creek. So what we're gonna do right now is filter some water. Uh, running low on my on my side one, so we're gonna filter some of my life straw. Show you guys how to do that. Let's set this aside for now. It's good to air up your bag. Get it nice and open. Now we're gonna take from the stream where it's nice and clear here. Uh oh. Feeling rain. Huh? So I'm feeling a little rain. We're gonna fill up the bag. The bag's full. Eh, not the nicest looking water. We screw on the live straw here. Pop the cap off. Take my cap off of this one. 
So basically, this is this is the uh, 16 ounce bag that I'm using here, and this is a 33 ounce bottle. So I'm gonna have to do this twice. You don't want to squeeze too hard. If you squeeze too hard, you'll uh, screw up your filter and you won't even know it. You'll just be drinking bad water. And plus, if you squeeze too hard, you could possibly end up with uh, a pop bag. And this water is coming out nicely. Yep, perfectly clear. That's kind of what it looks like, and just see, I'm not joking. <laughs> That's some damn good water. Fresh. We're gonna fill this up and get on our way. Now let's say I don't have any bottles or bags. This is how you use a life straw. <sighs> good water. This is here at the cross going to Webb Peak. This is also how you'll know you're at the crossing. Ash Creek Trail off to the right, which we're not going to do that. Columbine Corrals, actually where we're going to go to Webb Peak. There's a uh, fire lookout up there we're going to get on top of, if weather permits. What are we looking at, Keegan? So, this red mushroom I came across, I thought at first that it was one of the uh, the big fly agaric mushrooms that have white spots on them, aka the, the Mario mushrooms, which are actually poisonous. This right here, this is, looks like a species that we get out east, out in the Midwest, called the uh, the Rosella, which is edible, but it's not, uh, you know, by a lot of mushroom pickers, it's not one of their favorite ones to eat, but, and like I said, in a survival situation, it is something that you can eat. We're gonna later identify this mushroom and send it in, and make sure this is a, the species I'm thinking of. So, not yet. I noticed these uh, these shelf mushrooms is what you call them that usually grow off of uh, trees that have been knocked over or sometimes you get them on uh, on stumps but generally these polypore mushrooms are generally not edible although the bottom is spongy and porous just like the ones the the bolites that we talked about it's a completely different mushroom some may some of these may be edible but they could still they can still cause you to get a little sick so obviously not, you know, kill you, but you still don't want to eat them unless you know because that could really dehydrate you. You could lose all your water. So we found another mushroom or fungus on the trail, if you will. This is called witch's jelly or witch's butter. This is not an edible mushroom. So just keep that in mind. You see, you see a brightly colored mushroom like this. Generally, you do not want to eat it. This is covered in sap, but it's a green pine cone. You take your knife, you start to peel these back, which I've already done here. And 
and these are edible. As a matter of fact, on the way up, we've seen some that the animals were eating. Well, down the hatchet it goes. That one's a juicy one. So I'm actually very excited about this find because this is a uh, this is a mushroom I've been looking out for, but it's uh, not necessarily one you'd want to eat. This is uh, Amanita muscaria, aka the fly agaric, which is also another poisonous mushroom. Um, there are species I don't know if this is the exact one um, that is actually hallucinogenic. So you want to be careful. You know if you're up here. Um, once again, in a situation you don't want to eat this, you know, because that will uh, that will ruin your day. You can tell this is one of the agarics because they have these fleshy spores that just fall right off. And generally, the cap is a dark red, but maybe this one has been uh, sitting out, or you know, maybe it's just a dull colored amanita. Or, uh, amanita so, hopefully, we'll find more. So we're walking along the trail here, Mount Grand, and this is what bear poop here looks like. So they're around. It's Webb Peak. It's one of the peaks here next to what Mount Graham, and uh, we're gonna get up on a fire tower up there. So let's see. Keegan just found something he really is excited about. Uh huh. This is not an amanita. I believe this is another. Uh, one of the Rosella mushrooms. See the uh, the amanitas. They have uh, this ring around the stem called the annulus, and this does not have one. This isn't present, so that tells me this is one of the Rosellas. Although the amanitas are, they are gilled like this. The bottoms are. So this could be could be just a small one. I don't know, but generally the amanitas, you'll see the ring right around the stem. It's like a flushy ring. <laughs> oh shit, those are cool. Must be like Columbine. They're on Columbine. <laughs> Little pine trees. These are edible. What did you find, Keegan? So, I'm not exactly sure what these are. So, definitely not sure about this species. These right here are called uh, wood ear mushrooms. These are actually supposed to be edible, which I've never tried these. Any more not. Even though it looks uh, it looks like part of your nostril, that might uh, that might save your life right there. You find enough of it, which there's plenty here. So here we are on the trail. Keegan and I, Rocky, have a little snack before lunch. We'll take lunch up on the peak of the mountain. But yay, and I have a fork still. <laughs> down into the desert. I'm not sure, but that it's, almost looks like a town down there. It's about 60 degrees up where we're at right now. And the valley floor that you can see there is about 100. Well, maybe with the skies, maybe it's about 95 to 100 degrees. <coughs> and here we are on the Sky Islands in the pine forest, 60 degrees. And that's how close the desert is. 
So it's beginning to rain here on Webb Peak. We haven't made it to the top yet. It's uh, not bad though. I like it. I'm just hoping by the time we get there it cuts down and the skies clear up so that way we can get up on the uh, lookout tower. I don't want to get up there in the lightning storm. It's raining and it's pouring. Pretty pretty. Here we are, close to the peak. There's a trail split here, three different ways. What do we got? One that where we're coming from, one that way I think is up to the summit, one that way. Yeah. Okay, a couple. Columbine yeah, corrals. One mile. Ash one mile. Creek. One and three quarters. So yeah, basically, coming up to the top of Web Peak, right past over that is the sign showing you that you're on the peak. We're over 10,000 feet above sea level. And uh, I'm going to bust back my way to the rest of the way there so I can see the end result. There you go, Ash Creek, Web Peak Trail, Columbine Corrals. Looks like we can get a little higher up there, and that's where the fire tower is. We're going to go up. Web Peak Lookout, elevation 10,029 feet. So, I am absolutely terrified of heights. And I thought this would be more stair-like. It's actually more ladder-like. There's four platforms go all the way up. Got about 15 feet on each one, 15, 20 feet. So it's pretty far up there. And with the way the clouds look, I'm going to get off of the steel tower. Mm-hmm. One thing I love about climbing peaks, the second half of the trail is so much easier. So, now we're coming to the point where this Webb Peak Trail matches, reaches uh, Ash Creek Trail a little bit further up, a little bit further up Ash Creek Trail than where we split from last time. And uh, we're going to go ahead and finish out this, this segment. You guys can see the trailhead sign up ahead. What's awesome about this mountain is, well, we may be here on a... Monday and a Tuesday, but we really haven't seen anybody. It's been pretty awesome. There's your gates. 
and looks like we're actually back to the road. Web Peak Trail number 345. Web Peak one mile. Chelsea Flat Trail one and a quarter mile. Didn't see that up there. Ash Creek Trailhead down that way number 303. Warning entering burned area. Potential hazards include loose rocks, falling trees and limbs, flash flooding, and debris flows. Portions of trail are damaged or blocked by with debris. United States Forest Service Department of Ed. Okay, so we're at one of the information booths here, um, at one of the trailheads, and I'm going to point out some things here. My favorite sign here, no shooting in or near the following areas, camps, residents, occupied areas, recreation areas, or over water, over water bodies or roads, which means I could pretty much shoot where I want to except for those areas. Alright, so I got to say this is one of the coolest campsites I've ever been to. Uh, we're up by Ash Creek Trailhead, and uh, this is sitting about 9,800, I'm not exactly sure on the numbers, but 9,800 uh, feet above sea level, and this is cool, look what we got. You got horse corral, so you can bring your, corral, your horses up onto the mountain, and we did see a lot of horse poop there on the trail. There's a view of the camp area here. Nobody's here. Alright, so we're here at our campsite. We're just about uh, right below the 10,000 foot mark right now. Um, we're in heavy pine forest. It's uh, a lot different than what's below in the hot desert. Coming up here it was 98 degrees on the valley floor. Now it's 50 degrees. And we're here in the Sonoran Desert. Look at this. Can't see it too well, but start the campfire, and uh, I like to always have three different ways to light a fire. I have lighters, I have uh, waterproof matches, and my favorite magnesium and a knife. I got a cotton ball down here. Since everything out here is wet, it's got some Vaseline in it, and I'm gonna scrape a little bit of steam onto it and strike it. There we go. Let there be fire. This is wet, so we're going to hope it burns. Let it dry a little bit over this. Taking some some grass that has been recently rained on, so it's still a little dry, so hopefully it, we might get it to burn after it dries out warm. Mount Graham is a uh, rainforest above the Sonoran Desert. And uh, it's not necessarily that it's a rainforest, but it's pretty equivalent too. Very wet up here. Might take a few attempts to get a fire going. We're here on, on Mount Graham. Getting ready to hike back up to the campfire site because we got a little scared. We heard some bears and heard them growling and shit. So we got all nervous and came back up and found some edible mushrooms and ate them. And turns out they're not edible. So we're going to go back to the fire and hopefully we don't die. I'm supposed to get some tarantula downpour here pretty soon and probably get more mountain lion activity. <laughs> Mount Graham. Okay, this is my Jeez. Stanley pot. Uh, got it from Walmart. 15 bucks. See it to take. He's okay. The lid. Right. This locks down into a pot holder and it locks the lid. It normally comes with two cups. I only keep one now. This is a marine alcohol stove made out of a monster can. It costs about, I don't know, a soda and uh, a little bit of researching on YouTube. I could actually show you how to make this, but there's plenty of ways to see it on YouTube. It's a marine alcohol stove out of a soda can. That's all it is. I'll set that here. This is the cup that comes with these. The two of them come in and they both fit inside. Uh, this is basically what I'm going to use in the morning for my coffee and whatnot. I'm not going to use this now. <laughs> uh, this cup 
also has a measuring piece on it. I need about two cups for my instant potatoes tonight. So, I'm going to find it on there for two cups. About 16 ounces. Oh, you can definitely hear the bats now. Huh. I had just enough of the potatoes in that one. Sweet. My brain is that. Is that Coleman? The the pot? Mm hmm. It's Stanley. Oh, Stanley? Nice. I'm gonna have to edit all his shit out. <laughs> he's hungry, he thinks he's cook you're cooking dinner for him for comida. So here's my water for dinner tonight. <clears throat> With lid. And this right here is denatured alcohol. It burns the hottest, the cleanest, the smoothest. But I just put it in a regular rubbing alcohol thing for transport for easier mobility. The way this works, you just fill a little bit up in here. There's about enough to boil some water. Alright, we're gonna light it up. Now it's lit. Sometimes it'll be invisible. And with it being cold out here, it may take a while to go through the port since it's our first time using this specific one. Get it going. And there it is, people. <laughs> okay, so let's see how our alcohol stove is doing. It's just about burnt out. That baby's boiling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was boiling. It's starting to get there. Nope, that was boiling. There it is. The stove just went out. Shit, did it really? Yep. But it was at a rapid boil. Okay, so now we're gonna get dinner ready, at least the potato part, and eat that because we're hungry. Is it recording? I split the bag of potatoes between two since it's for Keegan and I. We'll split it half and half. The water too. Okay. Put like half a cup in there. There we go. Get the taters. We'll just stir that around and that's half a dinner right there. There we go. Alright. Headed back to the Ash Creek Trail. I guess we're on the Ash Creek Trail, headed back towards the car. Apparently we're cheaters and we cut all of this off. Where we happen to park at. You waiting for me, Rocky? Yeah? Let's go. Damaged forest. New life. Look at these. Beautiful. So we finally made the loop and reconnected with the end of the trail. We're going to be making our way back to the car now. Yeah, I think that uh, way. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. So this is the end of the hiking part of Mount Graham. Look at that. But we're going to go check out. Riggs Lake, which is higher up, on our way out of here. And this is the trail that comes down from the area where we parked at that cut off all of that. So, see you at the car. Could I say it was going to be an easy way back to the car? 
I forgot we came all the way downhill. Now we're getting up to uh, the car. We're at uh, what they call the Columbine. Nice cabin area. Mostly cabins for rent for the night or whatever. By you know, the way, that I don't like to camp. It's not camping. And uh, this is pretty much concluding the hike for for this and I apologize for my camera handling. It's exhausting getting up that. There's a the Columbine here. A little outhouse way out there in the distance. And we're gonna get up to the car. Here we are at the Columbine. Nice little recreational area up here. There's the car. So we're gonna get ready. We're gonna go up to Riggs. Riggs Lake, and we'll see you when we get there. So we're hiking down to Riggs Lake. It's not a big hike. We just want to see it. And here it is. Imagine the water can't get up to these points here, but it's cool. How far we walk out. That's Riggs Lake. Small. Okay, reminding you to prevent forest fires. Before you leave your campsite, make sure that your fire is out. If you're a smoker, don't throw your cigarettes on the ground. Enjoy, and also, if you guys like the video, and you like any of my videos, please hit this subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.